The ancient tradition of honoring athletes in art was fervently embraced by fascist Italy and Nazi Germany. In addition to creating art that celebrated athletes, these countries promoted physical culture. We will begin by discussing the artwork of fascist Italy. Perhaps the best example of fascist Italy's commitment to physical culture is the Foro Mussolini. The Foro Mussolini, also known as the Foro Italico, is a large sports complex in Rome, Italy. Construction of this complex began in the early 1930s, and it was officially inaugurated in 1932 as a symbol of Mussolini's vision of Italy's athletic and imperial prowess. The most iconic part of the complex is the Stadium of Marbles. This stadium is surrounded by numerous classical style statues, which depict various athletes and sports. These statues were created in the style of ancient Greek and Roman art, and were intended to evoke a sense of classical grandeur and physical strength. The Nazis also honored the athletic body in art and culture. The most obvious example of this is Lenny Riefenstahl's 1936 film, Olympia. The movie begins with shots of ancient Greece, the birthplace of the Olympic Games, classical ruins, Doric columns, ancient temples and Greek statues dominate the screen. The film links modern Germany to ancient Greece with the Olympic torch relay. An ancient tradition, first born in antiquity, is passed down to modernity. We see Myron's famous statue of the discus thrower turn into a real athlete, once again reinforcing the idea that the ideals of antiquity are being reborn in modern Germany. In the 1936 Olympics, artists would compete alongside athletes, just like in ancient Greece. One of these artists was Arno Brecker, who we will turn to now. Brecker has been described as the Michelangelo of the Third Reich for two reasons. Firstly, his work is very beautiful. Indeed, Salvador Dali famously said, God is beauty and Arno Brecker is his prophet. Secondly, Arno Brecker took direct inspiration from Michelangelo, imitating many of his works. The central theme of Brecker's work was the athletic body. To quote him, I am often asked why I use athletes as models and whether this is not outmoded. My answer, that which is good never becomes obsolete. Athletes are the best models for sculpture. It is impossible for a sculptor like me, who loves the triad of beauty, of the body, spirit and soul, to overlook either a male or a female athlete. In the art competition at the 1936 Olympics, Brecker won the silver medal for his decathlon athlete. This statue can still be found in the Berlin Olympic Stadium. This statue was greatly admired by Adolf Hitler, who made Brecker official state sculptor in 1937. He was given a large property and provided a studio with a thousand assistants. Brecker's output skyrocketed. Two of his statues were placed out the front of the new Reich Chancellery, and Hitler put him in charge of redesigning Berlin. This redesign never occurred, but we still have footage of a model that Brecker helped make. He designed a fountain that was to be at the center of this new Berlin. In the model, we can see Apollo riding a chariot pulled by horses. After the war, 90% of Brecker's lifetime output was either destroyed, confiscated by the Allies, or taken to the Soviet Union. The few statues that remain in Germany are a subject of controversy. At the opening of the Soccer World Championship in Berlin, people called for Brecker's statue at the Berlin Olympic Stadium to be removed and destroyed. To quote the author, Ralph Giordano, The bronzes are ugly and mendacious. I demand, away with these things at the Olympic Stadium. They should be quickly pulled down, tracelessly, and scrapped. This sentiment is held by much of the modern art establishment. Since the end of World War II, statues of athletes have been associated with fascism. This ancient tradition has, therefore, been abandoned by artists. Sculptors have turned away from the Apollonian ideal and embraced Dionysian deconstructionism. 